Hi, Soul Family. Okay, that was divinely orchestrated, that call. It was a client of mine, a regular client of mine. And as I said, that these messages aren't just for one person. They show me with my twin soul and I because we dream together. So he's probably helping me, right? We both are, are these people. And clearly I, my twin is shown as one that's helping another. So he's doing the same work as, as I'm doing in a different way and possibly the same way. But what, what, what I was finishing saying uh, when we got interrupted was that this person has a problem with acid. This person, now a lot of times people take LSD or they'll take ayahuasca or they'll take, so see my dreams, I'm seeing acid. I'm being shown acid. I'm being shown the little paper with the, with the little emblem on it and that they lick it and it's acid, right? I also in a past dream said, my, my best friend's mom had, grows the best mushrooms. Um, so a lot of times people will take um, something to open up their mind. They'll tell you. They'll t that's why I don't do ayahuasca. I'm telling you. Ayahuasca, LSD, marijuana. Marijuana. <laughs> that sounds funny just saying that. Pot. I just don't want to say weed. Um, anything that they, a salvia, um, peyote, uh, whatever it is that, that takes you to an altered state. They take these things in order to, they say, to broaden their mind, to open their mind. I'm sorry, I don't take anything. I don't need to open my mind to connect me to spirit. My mind is already open. And seriously, when you're thus connected and you open your mind to something like that, it'll, it may blow your mind so far that it, you may not come back. So no, I can't remember, I started to, uh, I'm still picking out cactus needles, P.S. So somebody brushed up against me. The, the Caxis family, and they transferred, that that connection transferred their toxicity to me, and I'm, pick, I'm still picking out the needles. There's another. And they're small, and they're hidden, and you can't see them. So this is energy. This is energy. Um, so as I said, that this person was called a shaman, and so many people looked up to this person. Um, they could literally be a shaman in their native um, land. They could be an Indian shaman, medicine man, or whatever. I don't care what they are. But this person is very arrogant, and this person is very... Um, knowledgeable and yet not responsible and so because of the toxicity that you know rub just rubbing up against this one is is hurting another just like was shown to me um so the title of our video today uh, i i, I be, i'm uploading the first half of it and it's entitled be aware psychically connected but not authentic people are transferring toxicity to you now remember that person that reached out and said, here, I'll help you. I'm not gonna let them hurt you. That was your real teacher, right? Not that one that was in Hollywood that had the big name that everyone followed, but when they were off there, um, when they weren't working, they were off partying, you know, and, and it wasn't just that in my dream. I couldn't write it all down. I was trying to do it really quickly. Um, it was a big party they were heading off to. We were all going together to this party. And the person said, hey man, I wanna go get some acid. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I'm expecting this person to be a spiritual person, but this person, so, so another thing that comes to mind is this person could be somebody that is a spiritually connected person, but they have an addiction issue that they have to address, right? I'm saying, but this person that was connected to me, I don't want anything to do with that. I, I, I don't do that, right? And that's why when I reached out and said, here, I'm not going to let them hurt you. Take my hand. And someone said, this is the, the real teacher. This is a true teacher. Right? I'm, I'm going to teach you and I'm going to walk my walk and I'm going to talk my talk. I'm going to say this is what we do and I'm not going to go after as soon as I get off camera and go to a party and, and take acid. I don't do that. Right? Because I'm real. You may not like, and, and it's funny, I got a comment from somebody on, on yesterday's, um, I got a present, a couple presents from my friend Joey from a client of mine and I, and I recorded, I always record my, my, why do I do that? Because when people send me something, I want them to see that I'm happy and I want them to receive that um, like they were there giving it to me in person that one-on-one -on -one attention and I and there's always something that comes out of it so I got a comment and afterwards after I recorded that I thought oh I got first of all it took me forever because I was trying to look something up and it wasn't wasn't working for me and then I swore and I thought oh I probably shouldn't have put I should probably edit that out and then I thought no I'm not gonna edit that out and now this brings back to mind something else in my dream that I that I didn't record so good, I'm glad I'm recording now. Um, there was somebody that watched that. And that person had told a white lie to someone else and had caused a problem. They didn't mean to cause 
them that much pain. But it, when you tell a, a lie, then you gotta tell another and it keeps growing, right? That person had a misconception of who I was. And they watched and they sat and they saw, they felt that I would judge them for who they were. They thought possibly that I was very religious and that I would, because what I'm looking at in the dream, the two dreams merging together, somebody is bisexual or they're a cross-dresser or they're gay, whatever they are, it's their own private business, right? But they felt that I would judge them and I didn't judge them. And so now they're feeling bad and they don't know what to do because they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, they feel, because they've told a white lie to someone else and now they've got to undo that damage. And they were looking at me saying, wow, you're authentic. And, and, and it's funny because when I, um, the comment that I got, I'll read it to you guys so you know what the hell I'm talking about because it sounds a little convoluted, I realize. Okay, so I go back to YouTube, to my comments, and somebody maybe have had to file bankruptcy and they're feeling, uh, and, and they've lost everything. And they're very embarrassed by it because of it. But if my own father, who is King Midas, um, my little sister died in a car accident and it, it blew his mind. It blew my mother's mind. It blew their marriage apart. And he, he couldn't function for a time properly. And he ended up filing bankruptcy and it wasn't even his fault. It was because an employee of his did something wrong and he had comeback after comeback when my dad wasn't, wasn't in the frame of mind to be able to handle the business. And because of that, all of this came back on my father and he ended up having to file bankruptcy. And I will tell you that my dad, for all the flaws that my dad has, his fine qualities outweigh them. He personally went to each of those people and paid them off. He paid them what he owed them. He did file bankruptcy, but he went to those people. He could have just walked away and said, I filed bankruptcy, sorry, but he paid each of those people off what he owed. Um, but what I'm saying is he ended up having to file bankruptcy and it wasn't even his fault. And so there is somebody else that I've seen as well that has gone through this. And because of something not due to their own fault, they have lost their business and they feel ashamed and they've been trying to work their way to the top. And they're a good person. And if they feel that they'll be judged for that, they need to examine what matters. That's a side point. Okay, so the person said to me, um, Sherry, the heat in South Carolina is nasty too. I admire your perseverance and I appreciate your readings. Much love. And I said, thank you, I loathe the humidity and heat. I'm a Canadian girl and do much better in cooler climates. Perseverance I have. Notice that is one of the traits of the totems that were highlighted. I must persevere. I'm in a twin soul relationship. I probably shouldn't have posted this video because I swore like I did, but I am who I am and sometimes I swear. I'm not perfect and sometimes I feel like it's important that I let the readings go out that way just for that very reason. Laugh out loud. Too many people pretend to be something they're not and how can we relate to that? Spirit has always encouraged us to be raw, real, authentic. Be truthfully who you are. Nothing annoys me more than fake. What you see here is what you get. Blessings to you. So I feel that everything was wrapped up in this dream. My client's call, what I watched in this scenario that I'm talking about, and, and this. I, I used to do try to be so careful when I first started the readings. And then I thought, you know what? They think I'm a freaking goody-goody. People have told me that. Somebody said, I didn't even want to date you because I thought you would look down your nose at me and I thought you were totally an uptight goody-goody. And I'm like, okay. So then I thought, you know what? I, I started to actually say things just for the shock value and people would be like, what? That, you're a spiritual teacher? I'm a spiritual teacher. Who says that a spiritual teacher doesn't swear? Who says a spiritual teacher doesn't have anal sex? I'm just saying those words. I'm just saying those words because it's coming into my mind how somebody thinks that you will be judged because they're gay, okay? Who says that a spiritual teacher, spiritually awakened person, isn't gay? I'm not coming from religion. I came out of religion. And Jesus, religion, Bible thumpers, came not to uphold the law, but he came to temper the law with love. So be authentic, be real, be your truthful self. You don't need to cut yourself all over with many pains in order to make other people happy. You don't need to follow what is popular. That guy that everyone was following was fake ass. He's a fake ass fuck. 
That's what I'm saying. Arrogant, arrogant, all about the money, all about the appearance, and did a really great facade. It's like that guy, that, that preacher, preaching fire and brimstone, and then he goes home and rapes his son, rapes his stepson, right? Everyone thinks he's a great guy. I was married to a man who molested my daughter, thank you very much, and everyone loved him. The men loved him, the women loved him, the children, the old people, everybody loved him, and he molested my little girl. So, and my son is forced to be in the same congregation as him. My son has gone on to be an elder in the Christian congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses, and that molester is in my son's congregation, the man who molested my daughter. My son is an elder, so he is one of the big guys, right? And the elder body came to him and said, is it okay if he gives a talk in, this, in the kingdom hall? It's up to you. How do you feel? And my son said, no. He's not allowed to speak on this platform, no not knowing what I know he's done. So I gotta tell you, even though my son doesn't speak to me because he thinks what I do is wrong, at least he's an honorable man. And he doesn't care what facade this person puts on. It doesn't matter, you can't undo what you've done. And he watered down what he did. He had, he admitted it to me. He admitted it to me and, and the police, I didn't, I unfortunately, he went to the police. I should have taken him myself, but because he went and, and I asked him to go turn himself in, they went easy on him. So he was able to water everything down to everyone else. And really what probably went out to everyone else was, you know, I was just being, you know, affectionate and she took it inappropriately and it was all kind of blown out of proportion. Except for the fact that he admitted it to my son too. So see what I'm saying? There are people that are professing and pretending to be something that they're not and they have hurt people. And there's this one that cuts themselves all over that one that didn't think they had a brain because they followed and they believed in this one. And then someone reached out their hand and said, look, I won't let them hurt you. And what came down is that person had a samurai sword and the samurai sword is this one. My cousin, Archangel Michael, he came with the big sword, this big sword right here. See this sword? And he cut his fucking head off. Bam. Just like that. <laughs> Just like that. And he said, I will not, and I said in my dream, I will not allow them to hurt you. And my twin said to that person, I will not allow you to hurt her. And the person that took my necklace, my mermaid necklace, this person said that they were me. They pretended to be me. This is another thing that's coming out. I've got a lot of people and I've had actually another reader. I've, I've been testing, I've been watching. That had, they call me on my work line and they ask me questions and they take notes and they literally take my information and transfer it as though it's their own work. They call me, they write in and they say, oh yeah, and they act like they're a shaman. They act like they are a spiritual teacher, but who are they getting the information from? Me, they're pretending to be me. They wanna be me, but they're not me. That person needs to take off my necklace and give it back to me. So there's a lot of that going on. And there's another um, person on here. And I listened to this one this morning and I was listening and I was like, how do you know exactly what I have said? How are you saying exactly what I have said? I'm not that connected that I could get word for word. So there is someone out there, and I'm not gonna name who they are because it doesn't, I don't have to, that is literally taking my content and passing it off as their own. And as proof of that, there is another reader, and she, I, I can give you her name because she chose to give her name. Um, she is... What is her name? So you can see that I'm not lying. I don't lie, but a lot of people need proof. Scorpio Gypsy Tarot. She wrote, put out a video and said somebody had taken, literally taken her video, copied it, and took her content and put their name on it and published it. And in this video, she says, um, in this video, they, um, oh wait, maybe that's that person. This is a person said, I love your reading style. Hold on, I'm sorry. Let's take that back. Wasn't that person? It wasn't that person. It's another reader. Hold on. Why don't you want me to know who it was? Because they commented back to me. They gave me a heart. Hold on. They gave me a heart. Where is it? Have they taken it down? This is intriguing. Basically, this person wrote and a video, did a video and said, I just want you to know that there's somebody who has taken my content and published it as their own. And, and the person literally had, here it is right here. <laughs> I want to make this right. 
because it wasn't that other reader. Okay. Moonlight guidance is this person. And the person, the person, this person is stealing my tarot videos. And I've watched this because what they do is, this is why you want to have somebody do it in front of you. This person that, that I said this morning I was watching and I was like, how can you know word for word what I said? They already have the cards out in front of them. It's already done there. They don't do it in front of you. It's already done there. And then she tells you what the story says. And I'm thinking, that's my story. Too close to my story. So this person said the same thing. This person is staring, stealing my tarot videos. They literally take it, transfer it, and put down that, that it was theirs. And the person had the nerve to write them and say, she followed them and, and said, let me have it. I've only used a few of them. And she's like, are you kidding me? This is mine. I worked for this. This is my content. No, you can't have it. And the person had been reported. So now the person says, update. The videos are now all removed. YouTube resolved this very quickly because you all helped by reporting this channel in the videos. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for helping to protect this channel. We're truly a little family here. Thanks, everyone. I wrote to this person. There were so many that wrote. Let's see if I can find it. Um, I didn't write a lot. <laughs> I just said, I understand. Basically, I said, I understand the same things happened to me. Um, but the thing is, I mean, that's pretty shitty for somebody to like straight up take every single, but they've been doing that to me for quite a while. <laughs> um, and, and my, my response is, you know, eventually you're going to find out who knows what the hell they're talking about. But if somebody can, is going to copy, like somebody comes to you and says, this is what I need to know. They ask for a reading, right? And then they come to me. They call me on my work line and they ask me the whole story. And it's funny because they have it. I feel like they have it written out. I know that they aren't who they say they are. I already, I've talked to you guys about this a lot. And then I give them the answers and I tell them, you know, this is what it is. And then they literally send that off as their private, as, as though they're the reader. It makes it look like they are connected. That is what is happening. There is someone who is getting information from me, giving it to my twin soul as in psychic information when it is not psychic. They're getting it from me and they're handing it to him. So it's confusing, right? That's what I've been shown. So for me, this person, they just gave me a heart back um, for what I said. I said, yep, done to myself as well. And they just, and they gave me a heart back. So right out of the blue, something wonderful happening to you. So I keep getting Michael, Michael keeps coming up. So um, let me go see if, if we have, uh, that's enough. Right, that's enough. I don't need to go anymore because if this is your story, you'll understand it. All I know is um, this person that had told the white lies had misunderstood something, and now they need to they need to straighten it up. And um, I got to tell you that for my own self, I know how difficult it is to come forward and say, "Hey, I messed up, man. I thought this, and I was wrong." And can you see way to forgive me? I think it takes a lot of balls for somebody to come forward and and say that. So I I, I have deep respect for that. I know it's difficult. Doesn't mean that, you know, if you've caused a lot of damage and a lot of pain, that there's not going to be issues to work through. And it may take a little bit of time, but I have deep respect for that. So, um, I want to go see if it's hot enough. Or not, not too hot, but we can go outside. It's not too bad, and I do want to go out there because um, we have a great heron. The one that, it's actually, it's not a great heron, it's a white egret, it's a great egret, and it's down in my um, on our property. It's down underneath the docks. I don't know if you, you probably, you won't be able to see it unless you zoom in, but he's hanging out down under the docks. So, out here, is it gonna be too hot out here? I just wanna sit up here because it, I'm happier out here, personally. And, uh, I like my energy outside. You know, when I was looking at those properties up in Idlewild, that was one of the things that, yeah, that works, huh? And uh, what I can do is I can do this if I want us to look at the, the cards, right? This isn't super sexy. And I got a broom handle behind me. I should hang something right here. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna get our cards and uh, I'm gonna do our reading out here. So do you guys recall, do you remember the items that you were choosing from? We're choosing from this. We're choosing from the sunflower, fancy Jasper. We're choosing from, am 
my mom's wand, and let me go get the other, along with the deck. Can you hear the song? You can stand under my umbrella. Under my umbrella. Ella, ella. We've got a lot of decks. Here for infinity has dealt its heart when the world has dealt its card. I broke a candle last night. Glass is shattered everywhere. That's probably a message in itself. Partnership, talking about me and my babe right now. Said I'll always be a friend. I took an oath and I'm gonna stick it to the stick to the end. Now that it's raining more than ever, know that we'll still have each other. You can stand under my umbrella. You can stand under my umbrella. So the person who has an addiction issue, you know, I know somebody in my life and her husband has an addiction and he fights it and he's always once an addict always an addict you know you're 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 never going to not be addicted you can be clean you can be sober but you are always going to be an an addict she made the decision that she loves her husband he's a good man he's a good man he's a good stepfather and uh he's a good person and We'll work through these issues together. And whatever it takes to work through the issues, we will. You know, there may have been slip-ups. It's nobody's business. But it doesn't mean it's not a decent person. So sometimes that's one of the crosses that we have to bear in this life, right? Something that we can't undo. If you're an alcoholic, you're always going to be an alcoholic. And you're going to have to work on that, right? So it doesn't mean that because this person, you know, my friend, my best friend's mom's got the best uh, acid or best mushrooms, remember? It may have been something that happened when they were very young and addic it got them addicted. Meth and heroin are one hit wonders and you're done, right? You're addicted. And so that's something that somebody could have to battle for their entire lives, will have to battle for their entire lives. And it takes a lot to do that, but it can be done. And when you have a supportive energy with you, and you're working in, I look like I'm, I, I'm, hold on, I look like a freaking nursing mother. I gotta take this off. There. Because <laughs> I got such big boobs, it looks like it goes straight down. But that is true, I'm a nursing mother. Think about that. That's a nurturing, nurturing energy. That is the queen of pentacles. That is the empress, right? The nursing mama. So, um, what I want to do, even though I know it's rude, I want to switch these glasses because they're all smeared because I've ruined them. Yes. Don't ever get glare, non-glare glasses, because when you do, they they have a very thin coating, and it. Um, and this is the other item, the necklace. Sorry, they. Um, and I forgot the wand. I'm so sorry. I thought I picked it up. If you get dust on them and you go to wipe them, even with the protective cloth, it scratches because there's such a thin coating. So that was my second pair of $500 glasses that are now ruined. And they said, well, you just have to rinse them underwater. And I said, yeah, well, when I'm hiking or riding my bike, I don't happen to have a sink. 
So I have this protective cloth, but if I had known, and I didn't know, if I had known that that protective coating is so incredibly sensitive, I would never have done it. So $1,000 worth of the glasses I can't see out of. These glasses are my very first ones I ever got, and they're freaking bifocals. I look like I'm an old lady in them, right? But they don't scratch. I've, I've been freaking out in the mountains and, you know, I mean, hell, these are the ones I got first. Don't ever get the protective coating. Okay. So because of, of what I watched in my dreams last night, because of the scarecrow that I saw, the scarecrow did have a brain, right? That person did have a brain. That person was under the influence of someone else that they thought was, was a spiritual person and they were misled. So there was nothing wrong with the scarecrow, just like the Tin Woodman thought that he didn't have a heart, but he did have a heart. He was loving and wonderful. A lot of things that we think about ourselves that aren't true, right? So I'm going to the shapeshifter oracle because of that particular message. I feel like it, I know what it refers to. So two kittens, I don't wanna see that one again. Correct neutrality on all levels. So we're gonna start with the wand, with my mom's wand. Song, I'm in need of something good right now. So for those who chose the brass wand, um, do we want to give it energy? This is fire. Fire. So fire energy. Passionate situations. Could be fire signs. Could be um, following your passion. We'll, we'll see what this is in regards to. For those who chose the fire energy. The fire element. Fire elements are very Sagittarius Leo. Whatever it is. We'll see. Whatever it means. I just love being out here. I'll tell you something else in a minute. Loyal guardian, I love this. Remember the one, I'm not gonna let them hurt you. Take my hand, you're gonna be safe with me. Magical protection is here for you. And you know, that can be with somebody energetically. So who's holding on to who? Now you're looking at it, it looks like that little girl's holding on to that big Rottweiler. You know, good dog Carl that babysat the baby. This one in my dreams that they call a baby, it's a parent is what I'm seeing. It's a parent, it's an adult that acts like a baby. They act like they can't, but they can. So magical protector, you have a loyal guardian. You have someone that's there to, to help you. You have that energy. Do you remember, do you remember Good Dog Carl? It's a series. Um, I have one of the books. It was my, I, I used to collect children's books and um, of course everything was stolen, but I found this one in a box. And Good Dog Carl is a Rottweiler. And the parents were busy. And so the dog was in charge of taking care of the kids. So this could be a sibling, a younger brother, younger sister, and your older brother, older sister taking care of you, right? It could be that energy. But that's what good dog Carl did. Good dog Carl took care of the baby. And uh, it's fierce protection. And it's also us who have been um, reborn. We, we're like babies, right? I just said I'm a nursing mama, right? So there's me taking care of, of the one that I love energetically, right? And uh, if you're somebody who's been picked on, who's been bullied, who's been teased, there's a lot of bullying going on. And I'm, I'm a fighter for the underdog. That's my favorite role. And uh, they get to the place where they, they would rather not have any attention. They, they would rather just you ignore them than to be noticed because when they get noticed, they get hurt. So they'd rather go away. So when this energy comes up, the spirit's saying that you, you don't have to go away. You have this protection around you. And if there is anything that's unjust that's happened to you, or if there, if you are in a position where you feel vulnerable, this energy is going to do, just like I said in that dream, I will not let them hurt you, period, right? They're gonna be warned off become before they get too close because that dog is gonna be let loose on them. So you may have been bullied. You have felt extremely vulnerable. I have, I've been bullied, I've been picked on. Maybe when you were young, you were not well. There, there are people that were very um, ill when they were young, and so they felt very fragile. And maybe they were babied in the family, and so people made fun of them. Um, whatever this situation is, it's, um, it's made them maybe feel that they're weak when they're not weak. Remember, I don't have a brain. Yes, you do. I don't have a heart. Yes, you do. Yes, you absolutely do. That movie is awesome. And remember the people that were taking the drugs, right? Not all of them were taking drugs. So when babies are young, they're fragile, they're vulnerable. They're not able to do for themselves. 
So this is kind of what we're like when we go through a change in our life, a transformation in our life. We may be a big business person, but we've got a major transformation going on in the ways of way that what we see in the world, what we believe in the world. We've changed from, you know, we've awakened. We have a different perception about things now. And so it makes us feel vulnerable. And so what we need around us are people like this. We want real teachers. We want real mentors. We want real friends. We want truthful Right? Otherwise, we can become so overwhelmed that we run away and hide, which is what so many people are doing. So, if you have this energy around you, it makes you feel safe. I like this. I like this. I heard in my dream, I hired a bodyguard and I, I ran I, and I took off. But I felt safe with that bodyguard. Some people put up a protection. They put up a tough shell. They put up a tough exterior. They say they're married when they're not because they don't want to deal with women. Want to see the proof of that? Somebody came up to me at the grocery store the other night. I was in the ice cream aisle because I wanted ice cream badly. And I was, of course, wanting to go to the most decadent of all of the ice creams. It was a Belgian chocolate one. <laughs> Belgian. And I was looking at it, drooling over it because I've had it before. And it's like ganache. And it, or ganache, is that how you pronounce it? And it's literally a whole c a case of, of, of chocolate and inside is the ice cream. Oh my God, died and gone to heaven. It was like 54 carbohydrates. I mean, it was insane. It was like two days worth of food, calorie wise. And I'm standing there going, oh God, it's so good. It's so good though, I would love that. I could eat the whole thing and be sick with it. And this young skinny guy comes up and uh, he's looking at the ice creams and he's got one, he's looking for the other. And I said, go eat that, eat that kind. And he goes, why? And I said, because it's insane. And he goes, ganache? What's ganache? And he says, no, it's ganache. And, and I'm probably saying it wrong too, ganache. And I said, but it's Belgian chocolate. And he goes, Belgian chocolate, where's that? And I said, no, it's a type of chocolate, but it's amazing, right? He didn't know anything about it. I'm not making fun of him. He didn't know what it was. I didn't know. I'm probably saying it wrong too, but it was good. And I said, I can't have it, but you can. And I said, I said, I don't want to put on the carbs. He goes, I want the carbs. And I said, then you get it. It'll make me happy. So he gets it. And I go over and I get the low carb Rocky Road, which was damn good anyway. And I ate way too much of it. Um, <laughs> so then I get into my car and he drives up. And I'm looking at him thinking, you freaking young kid. And he's getting into a forerunner, my vehicle. I don't even have that forerunner. So he pulls up and he rolls his window down and he says, are you married? And I said, no, I'm engaged. And he goes, oh, he says, I'm just new to town and blah, 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 blah. So why did I say that? I am engaged. Spiritually, I am married to my twin in all reality. But I said I was engaged because I don't want him all over me. It was a protection. I get it all the time. And I and I like, this was my mom's ring. It looks like a wedding ring and I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna leave it this way. So now you guys know that I'm not engaged. I am, I am spiritually engaged because my twin isn't here. We will be married eventually. Spiritually anyway, we always are. So sometimes people put up so stories, right? They need to have guidance. They need to have protection. You know, when, when we're young, they need to be around people that are less sensitive because we're super sensitive when we first awaken. I am still super sensitive, but I'm getting used to a lot of stuff, right? I've had it coming at me for a while. So this guide or this energetic guide is the samurai in my dream, the samurai. I will not let anyone hurt you. You can follow me. You can come to me. You won't be hurt. You think they're gonna mess with me? They're not gonna mess with me. I've got freaking fangs. I'll growl fiercely at anyone that wants to hurt you because you're gonna tell the truth about what you know and you're gonna have protection while you do it. So right now, there is a protective energy around you. Very, very protective person, someone that loves you very much. Um, there may be people in your life. There may be situations. There may be job situations. Uh, uh, friendships or frenemies or whatever the situation, family situations that make you feel like threatened, uncomfortable, um, uncertain about how to handle yourself. And spirit recognizes that. I clearly saw it in my dream, didn't I? And they're showing you that with this companion at your side or soon to be at your side, you're going to be able to deal with any danger around you because this one's going to kick their ass <laughs> straight up. So if anyone's been bullying you or behaving in a way that feels intimidating to you at this time, Know that there's someone on your side that's not, they're not gonna let you down, they're real. They're like me in that dream. You can come here. And then that person said, that's a real teacher. You can trust that person, they're not fake. Okay, I like that a lot. I like that that came out with fire energy. See, so, you know, I'm a fire sign and I've had bullying, but I hear you. Where are you? Hi. 
See my little hummingbird? It comes and it sits right on that little dried out piece of cactus. Talks to me first. Or maybe that was me. I was talking, wasn't I? Hummingbird. Oh, that's what I was gonna tell you while we shuffle and go on to the next. So um, I, I posted a video of me riding my bike around up in Idlewild, right? Because I finally got through to Idlewild. And uh, um, Deb Smith is somebody on Facebook, and she went and watched the video. And so then she said it was inspiring to her. So she looked up real, realty around there, and she pulled up um, this place that's just a dollhouse. I'm going to go see three of them this weekend. One of them is $75,000. Um, I pulled up another. It was like forty. 3,000 and one was 32,000 so she pulled up this one and she goes what about this one she goes it's 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 you know bright and, and new and it's got it's got really nice hardwood floors and uh, but it doesn't really have much on the outside whereas the other one's got this giant patio wraparound patio and all these bells and whistles on the outside but the inside's very small so and I don't really I'm not really into the inside the way it's done actually pretty much any of it so I'm thinking about this right now there's a lot of but but it's got a giant porch a beautiful giant porch that goes on forever, but the other one has two bedrooms inside. Doesn't have a lot on the outside, but you could add that. So I'm thinking about relationships. I'm thinking about the place even. So, and then there's another one that's in between both. So you know how Goldilocks went in and, and went and tried the first chair and it was too hard. And tried the other chair, it was too soft. And then this one, ooh, it was just right. Tried one, ooh, it was too hot. Ooh, that's too cold. Ooh, this is just right. So there's the one that's just in the middle. I found that one and uh, the one is in a 55 and older park, which they can fudge it, right? Or 50 and older park. Um, I could get into that. But my twin's younger than me, so he couldn't. Well, maybe he could. I don't know. And But it's up in Pine Cove, which is my spot in Pine Cove where I go, you guys. And the other two are down towards town within walking distance of town. But there's that one. The one that they found was in Pine Cove, and it didn't have any of the... Um, the stuff around the outside. And the other one had, was beautiful. It's down in town, it has everything. But it has a very small inside. And then the one that I like has got an ucky color on the outside. I call it sacral chakra because it's kind of like a burnt orange, which is literally not my favorite color. I'm starting to really like that color, which is interesting. And uh, what it has as, it's got the best of both. It's got a huge yard and you could literally add onto the back of it because the property is so big. And it's right in between. So I'm gonna go see all three of those this weekend. It's just, you know, makes me think about, maybe you don't have all the bells and whistles on the outside, but we can add on to that, right? You've got a lot of room to grow. Whereas the other one, it's already dialed in, but it was kind of stuffy and old. It was like an old person. It was like an old person's home. Uh, that's what I said. I said, I, I can't deal with those curtains. And, and you could tell by the way it was decorated inside and with the little gnomes on the outside, it was an older person's place, right? And the other one was just bare bones, very, very, too young, didn't have anything. Had a very small lot, had no bells and whistles. And, and it was, you know, it was bright and clean, but that's all it had. And then there was the one, oh, the one that I choose. It's funny because in the pictures, it's got this hat. And I'm like, that's my twin's hat. It was funny. Um, the, the owner said, we'll give you money towards painting it. You can paint it any color you want. And it's got a giant yard that's completely fenced with a giant tree in it. That's the one I want. So it kind of makes me think of people, right? You could have the new one. It doesn't really have any, hasn't really learned anything yet. They're bright, shiny, and new, but they don't really have much going for them. The other one's way too old. It's stuffy, and it's 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 pretty much done. You can't really do much, and there's, there's not a lot going on inside. There's a big outside that you can sit around, but not a lot going on inside. And then there's the one that's got a little bit of all of it with the ability to expand. <laughs> that's the one. I knew that was the one. It's the one I chose. Correct for neutrality on all levels. For those who chose the infused Reiki Charge bracelet, and I did because I make them. Let me get a drink of my almond milk. Talked about that in a second. Ghosts of the Pumpkin Patch. Okay, count your blessings. So we always want to be grateful for what we have and more will come. What's going on is you see this one's quite tired, quite tired, not a lot of sleep, up at night, thinking about things, worrying about things. Harvest has come and gone. Everybody else has gotten their harvest. There's nothing there for me. I'm standing here feeling quite forlorn. You could get to the place where you start feeling sorry for yourself because it's just pretty much been shit, you know, and everyone else is in a relationship. Everyone else's job is going great. And where's mine, right? I, I, I'm not unhappy for everyone else, but I would be happy if I would have it. Or maybe you are feeling sorry for yourself. 
Maybe you have been feeling sorry for yourself because it's really been unfair. You know, are you saying that to yourself? This isn't fair. You know? Harvest has come and gone and I haven't had it. So the message is basically that soon it's going to be harvest again. And it is because we're mid of August right now, right? And the ghosts of the past are going to come back and start haunting you again if you can't figure out something different this time. I'm not invisible. I'm here. Can you see me? I'm here. Why is it everything coming and going and passing by me and I'm not getting mine? The number is one. Keep your thoughts positive. Well, there is a blessing for you. This one comes to remind you of the blessings that you have in front of you and remind you how lucky you are. That's why I came to sit out here. This is a beautiful place. It's beautiful out here. There's a blessing that seems overlooked. It's been there so long. It's been cloaked almost and you haven't paid attention to it. So familiar that you barely see that it's there. You're kind of blind, really. Song right now, someone said don't drink her potion. When she's mean, you know you love it. She tastes so sweet. Don't sugarcoat it. So this is about this young, pretty one that's hurting everyone. You like fighting with her because you're used to being treated disrespectfully. You're used to being bullied. And so you get a sexual charge off of it. That's what I was gonna bring up. Sometimes people are in a relationship where somebody has grown up in a house where they were ignored or they were not as intelligent as their brother or sister or and they didn't feel like I can't be that one like Simba remember Simba I can't be him they were always expected to be like their other sibling but I can't be that oh my gosh I'm watching a cormorant you won't be able to see it but it's fascinating the cormorant is in the in the lake fully in the lake it looks like it's swimming across the lake and it's in its flying in the but it's in the water it's not leaving the water its wings are fully out in the water as it goes across. A cormorant is the bird that somebody has put a ring around their neck and made them work for them. They dive down and get the fish, but they're not allowed to keep their fish. That's why the ring is there to prevent. So they're not able to keep what they work for. Someone is taking what they have worked for, which is what I've talked about earlier, right? And they're trying to make their way across the water. They're trying to fly, but they're stuck in their emotional waters. So the cormorant message said, you will dive down underneath the, wa the emotional waters and you will emerge safe and sound because you are a diving bird. You can do this, but don't work for others. Don't work and give your work away and allow others to take what you, credit for what you have done. That is an incredible scene that I'm watching right now. So I'm getting messages right now. Hold on. I'm, I've got to keep this filed, Spirit. Not so many. Um, so this one has been in, raised in a family environment where they have either always been compared to another um, or they've been ignored or they've been... Um, told that they were difficult so and they've maybe watched this dynamic in a family so what they've done is they've grown up to be the person that pushes you pushes your button pushes your button pushes your button and and they push your button to the point where you, you lose your shit you explode now this could have been somebody that was yelled at a lot screamed at a lot and they're used to that they know how to deal with that they don't know how to deal with proper love so they literally get a sexual charge off of seeing you get fired up but you don't, that's not a healthy way to be. That's a codependent relationship. I get off on you getting angry. I like it when you get angry. I'm a bad guy. Make your mom a mad guy. Seduce your dad guy. I'm a bad guy. I'm a bad guy because I like doing things like that. I like, I like it when you get mad. That's a song. I like it when you get mad. It makes me feel, it turns me on. That is dysfunction. Okay? That came up. Um, the signs are all around you, which is literally what I'm watching right now. It's incredible. So the ghost of the pumpkin patch, you may have gotten to the place where you've been feeling sad, right? You've been feeling that it, you're not getting what other people are getting and yet you're not recognizing the abundance around you. That's why I purposely came outside to, to look in my beautiful lake and I appreciate it every single day. I sat with my cats last night on the patio. Oh, I have to show you something. I sat on the patio and we did our full moon release. My first hibiscus just opened up and look at the color, sacral chakra, pink and orange and red all in one. Oh my gosh, my very first one. Yay, I've been babying this one. Hothouse flower, and look at the colors of the, of the butterfly. That hothouse flower, you know what's interesting about this hothouse flower? It's just as strong as this desert rose. It is strong. What wasn't strong 
were the Roses, Mr. and Mrs. Rosewood. They had a really hard time. They just couldn't. They've got to be babied. They should be strong. These are roses. They should be able to handle the cold and the heat, but they're very touchy. But this hothouse flower, you may think, oh, that person's so delicate. That person's so sensitive. That person is strong as fuck, just as strong as that desert rose. That's amazing. So that's amazing. Right? So somebody that somebody else in the family, maybe you were ill when you were young, remember? Maybe you were, um, they thought that you were difficult or that you thought they thought you had issues and that you weren't strong and so they tried to protect you or keep you in a cocoon, but that's a strong motherfucker. Yes, I said that word. And so here, don't be this one that's feeling so sorry for yourself and wishing for your harvest to come. Look around you. There is always something to be grateful for. There's something that you're not paying attention to. It's right in your hands. This one is telling you, we want you to have your harvest. Maybe you've got outstanding money issues. I've had issues with money. And I, if, if you sit there and stress with your worry, worry with your money, I got somebody watching my bank account online, which is interesting. Like, where do you get your money? And I wanted to say something that's funny. How do you do what you do? I can make do with almost nothing. I grew up with a grandmother who raised me that went through the Great Depression. And I can make do. I can turn things into money. I can flip things and I can exchange things and I can go with very, very little and you wouldn't know it. You would be shocked at how I have been able to survive on almost nothing. And I don't do it by myself. I've got, my landlord is, is when it's been lean for me, I've paid him half the rent at a time. Sometimes I paid him four times in one month. Seriously, I have. I'm telling you the God's honest truth. Anyone else out there that had a great, had a grandmother that kept her money in a tin can under her bed? My grandma, she didn't trust the bank. That's where she kept her money. I think it's pretty funny. She taught me to be that way. My brother had money. It went through his hand like a sieve. And me, I always had it stashed. <laughs> so there's something that you're not realizing. You've got maybe something more than you realize in your hand. Um, you've got more material wealth than you think. You've got more than you, than, than you realize. So, but the message for this card, and I love how spirit works everything together exactly as it's supposed to. Right then I looked across and saw that cormorant trying to get across their emotional waters, still soggy in their emotional waters, but those wings were big. That was a big cormorant. And he says, I'm not gonna stay. I'm not gonna be stuck down here in this emotional water. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get out of there, right? So the message in this says, don't allow somebody to take what you have worked for. Do not allow it. That one is gonna get out of that emotional water. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be kept down for the count. I am a diving bird and when I dive down deep and I do my work, I'm gonna keep what I catch. I like that. Okay, I love how spirit brings everything together at one time. Um, so the next item that we're gonna choose from is gonna be the mermaid necklace. So we have the mermaid necklace, moms, this, oh and this, okay. So the mermaid necklace, we go back to the shapeshifters. In her eyes, I, I think I see the future. I know this is my last chance. We fell in love, I don't know how it happened. Just keep your eyes on me. This girl is my destiny and she said, shut up and dance. <laughs> dance is moving in harmony. Correct for neutrality on all levels. I'm just thinking of the synchronicities and how my client called right then, filled in part of my dream, how that other reader filled in part of my dream, how other, my, other dreams came together like a jigsaw puzzle. Sometimes it takes that long for all the pieces of the puzzle to come together and all of a sudden the light goes on and you figured it out, right? Correct for neutrality on all levels. But anyway, I'm excited to go up and check out these little faces because it's just um, creating my future. It's just also, it's kind of like, um, when I was quite young, and uh, I lived in a, mo a mobile home at the beach, and my parents were very, very wealthy, and they thought that that was beneath me. But my um, my son's father was very young, and he bought himself a mobile home. I was proud of him, and I turned that into a dollhouse. I had a little tiny garden, and it was dialed in, and I loved that place. I was proud of him. He was 21, you know, 21 years old, and buy your own mobile home. I think that's pretty pretty amazing. No one took care of him, but uh. I gotta tell you, how many people can line up their exes and say, you know, see their good qualities, except for the molester. I saw all of his good qualities too. I just didn't see the bad one. 
correct for neutrality on all levels for those who chose the mermaid necklace. Alice in a sea of tears. Okay, there's been a lot of crying here. Crying yourself, crying yourself into a pool of tears. And if you stop crying, those tears will recede and the water will go down because that ocean is literally made from your own crying. So stop your freaking crying. Now, you might be feeling like you are out of, out of your depth. Clearly, you look like you're gonna drown, right? Maybe financially you're gonna drown. Maybe as far as your health, you feel like you're gonna drown. Maybe as far as your finances, you feel like you're gonna drown. But when you sit there and focus on the negativity and you cry about it, you're making it worse. You're definitely not helping yourself. So at this moment, you're feeling maybe you're abandoned. Maybe you're abandoned by your family. Yesterday, uh, a client of mine, was it yesterday or the day before, called me and said that they were feeling quite depressed because they realized that when they got sick, only one person really cared about them and, and, and really gave a damn and said, you know, how are you doing? And was there for them. And I said, you know what, be grateful for that one person. And tomorrow, contact that person and say to that person, you know what, I really appreciate you. When the chips were down, you were there for me. You've always been my friend. I appreciate that. You're a good person because I would rather have one genuine person than a bunch of fake people around me. So it's about the way you are focusing your attention. Right now you're feeling cast away, out of your depth, feeling abandoned. You will find your way to shore if you stop your freaking crying and you see a rat and you see the crab that are there to help you. The crab is a cancer. The crab is crabby on the outside maybe a tough exterior, but very soft on the inside. The rat, somebody might have called that person a rat, but rats are very intelligent. The rats and the crab are both gonna show you how to get to shore. You can use the qualities of both of these. Rats are all very, very smart. The rats of Nim, I talk about them all the time. And this one is going to show you how to use your intelligence. The crab is gonna show you how to protect yourself and keep your soft heart safe, but it's also gonna show you how when to crawl out of your shell. Because maybe you have gotten away from a situation that's been very toxic, like what I watched last night in my dream. It was difficult, that was awful. It was awful, I felt the energy of, of all of that. And maybe you, you've gone to a new place, but where you're at your new place, it's not better than the, than the old place. And so, I, I don't know what I ran from, this is now worse. So this is about changes, dramatic changes, feeling overwhelmed, feeling out of your comfort zone. Maybe you're out of your comfort zone, right? And I don't know who I can trust, I'm not quite sure, I haven't really, maybe, maybe now you're having the emotional fallout, post-traumatic stress fallout from what happened before. It could have been in your childhood. Maybe somebody, like with a twin soul relationship, what happens is we come along and we, it's like we pop a pimple and now it hurts. You know when you've got a, a blister in your heel? As long as the blister's there, it's not very comfortable. When you pop that, that's sore. And now you gotta deal with that. It's gotta dry out, right? That, that's all gotta come out and it, then it's gotta dry up before it starts feeling better. So in a soulmate relationship, especially a twin soul relationship, we're there to set each other's triggers off and, and bring to the surface things that we've ignored. I've said before, my landlord, I'm like, oh, I've got a sliver in my finger. And he goes, oh, I had one yesterday. Look at how it's all cut open where I had to get it out. And I said, so what's worse? Leaving the sliver in there and it's annoying or cutting it open and have it hurt like hell for a few days. And he goes, yeah, but then it's gone. But a lot of people would rather just leave it in there and ignore it. It's annoying, it doesn't work for you, but it doesn't hurt like when you have to dig it out. But you do have to dig it out. So maybe that's what's happened. You've had something that's triggered you, it's brought something to the surface, It you've faced it, and it's been difficult. And now you're dealing with the emotional fallout, the, the post-traumatic stress fallout of that situation. So with these, with the rat and the crab at your side, you're, you're able to use the qualities of both of these animal totems to help you Get back to shore, keep your heart protected, keep yourself protected, but also keep the softness inside of you. Use your wit and intelligent, dry up your tears. You're gonna be okay. They're gonna guide you to shore. You've let go of a situation or maybe you've been let go of. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you've been fired. Maybe you've walked away from something. Maybe you knew you needed to. It was a sense of comfort, but it wasn't good in your highest, in, in, in the highest. So you let it go. You either let go of something, somebody let you go, whatever it is, maybe somebody broke up with you, whatever the situation is, it's been, it's an emotional fallout. It feels like crap, right? Maybe friends that like, like my client that realized they weren't my friends all along. They weren't my friends. I thought they were, but they weren't. It hurts. Don't focus on that. Focus on the fact that you've got one really freaking awesome, amazing, loyal friend. 
right? And also, now you're awakened to that. I said to him, this is the way it happens when we ascend, when we awaken. It happens to every single one of us. That's why I go through all this crap first so I can share it with you. And now you then, once you go through it, you can share and help others because we're all supposed to help others. As you ascend, spirit doesn't steal people away from your life. They take people away from your life that are not in your highest good. You haven't lost them. You have been spared because they're not on the same vibrational frequency anymore. Some of your old friends will kind of keep around a little bit and they'll still move through as you as you move through into your your awakened state. Others are going to fall by the wayside and you can try all, all you want to hold on to them, but you're not going to be able to hold on to them. You won't know why that they're moving away from you and it'll hurt, but that's the way it happens as we ascend. You're being spared in the long run. You're going to be vibrating on a level with the people that are more in line with your frequency, your new improved frequency. You're wiser now. You're, you're less um, likely to be hurt by those because now you've been awakened to it. You've seen what's going on, right? You're capable more of taking care of yourself. I've now figured out the rat and the crab. I've figured out they showed me how to protect myself, but also allow my heart to keep soft. Use my mind and my brain, my intuition. We're working it all together. I'm not going to focus on the sad. I'm going to focus on the positive. I realize that when I have an attitude of gratitude, more comes to me. I'm knowing, I'm learning how to manifest. I'm learning how to work things. In all ways, I'm better. And I would rather be, I said to this person, I'd rather be alone than be surrounded by a bunch of funk, fight, fake friends. I don't know what language, funky fake friends, right? Um, you've done the right thing. Don't think that, that walking away or letting go or passing up that opportunity, or even if they let you go, it was the right thing to have happen. It was in your highest good. And help is here for you in some way or another. It's helping you make a change. It's very, very important. And as I say that, dubs are flying around. Okay, so now our final, which is the Fancy Jasper, Sunflower. Song right now, Young Blood. Say you want me out of your life. I'm just a dead man walking. Yeah, you need it. So you need me, you want me, you, you don't want me. You throw me away, you push me, you throw me away. Young Blood. A young blood is a young... Um, Indian brave, or it's a young gay person, or it is a um, younger person to an older, connected with an older person. And basically it's control. I told you, um, I don't know if I finished this statement about how sometimes people can have control over you with sexual, it's called, it's sexual magic. Uh, once you've had sex with somebody, they, your energy is within them and they can control you energetically. And that's what they do. They throw you away. It's a, it's a toxic relationship. It's pretty sick. Correct for neutrality on all levels. For those who chose the fancy Jasper. Funny that I said fancy Jasper. When I think of a fancy man, I think of a gay man. Young blood. Say so you want me out of your life. I'm just a dead man walking. Yeah, you need it. You need it. So it could be a wealthy man that has a younger woman. It could be a wealthy older woman older woman that has a younger man. That's what I'm watching right now. I'm watching this little bimbo go by on a boat. <laughs> I hope it's his daughter because she is way too young to be with him. But she's all suntan with her fake boobs on the front of the boat. Young blood. You push and you push and I pull away. I give and I give and you take and you take young blood. So somebody is controlling another person. And I'm running away. I'm running away from you. Young blood, Correct for neutrality, what it makes me think of, it makes me think of Christian Grey in Fifty Shades of Grey and Mrs. Robinson, the older woman, wealthy woman, who acted like his friend and even when they stopped having sex because he was her first sexual experience, he was her, conf she was his confidant and pretended to be his friend, but that wasn't the truth. The truth of the matter was she was interfering and manipulating and keeping him away from the person that actually he loved and he didn't know that, she did. And this was his mother's best friend. I have heard this story way too many times. And when you're a young guy and the hot older cougar has sex with you, everybody thinks it's pretty cool. But as you get older and this woman still pretends to be your friend, but she's controlling you and literally blocking the love of your life from coming to you. And right then a dragonfly flew by. Time to wake up, young blood. Correct for neutrality, that person is not your friend. Last 
Autumn is my last chance. Please do not lose hope. Now look at this one with their cold, slim, dirty, greasy hair. And I'm holding on to that apple. Feeling quite hopeless. Autumn is my last chance. I'm holding on to this apple, but I don't want to take a bite of what I have. I have it in my hand. But if I take a bite of it, it's going to be gone. And then what? But if you take a bite of that apple, you'll have nourishment. You'll have something sweet to taste. And there's seeds in that apple. And you could plant that apple. And you could grow a grove of trees. The trees that you can use to build. It's basically saying to you, you have in your hand everything that you need. Magician, you think of yourself as a joke. But you're not. You've been told that. You're so focused on the material. Number six. Six is also a sign of victory. Six is also a, a number of nostalgia and someone coming back from the past. I'm seeing a wasp right now. A wasp is many messages of the wasp. The wasp can sting you and hurt you really bad. A wasp is also a, an, um, a female avian military person song right now I want you out of my head I want you out of my bed what I'm hearing in this song is somebody molested someone when they were young and it's kept them stunted as far as relationships have gone it's kept them stunted as far as moving forward with intimacy because they were molested by this one at a young age I want you out of my head I want you out of my bed goodbye 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 and remember the song I got yesterday goodbye France my mother's name was France Francis I want you out of my head, I want you out of my bed. A mother who molested a child. I want you out of my head and I want you out of my bed. It's also a message about a mother who has put sick thoughts into their son's mind because of what she's gone through in her own life. I want you out of my head. I want you out of my intimate life. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Many, many messages there. You're lost and you're lonely and you're feeling like you don't have anything to sustain yourself, but you have everything you need, light worker, in order to move forward on your path because you truthfully are the magician. You've got everything right in your hands, right in the palm of your hands, but you're afraid to take a bite of it. You're going to have to. You're eventually going to have to because that coat isn't going to keep you warm. You're not getting any food from behind you. You're not, you're not getting it from any other source. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for someone to come to me, but I'm cold. I'm hungry. I'm searching and I can't even remember what I'm looking for. I'm so lost. What was I looking for before I got lost? I remember in my dream, what happened? I don't know, you tell me what happened. I fell off my path. Well, you're back now, aren't you? I watched somebody riding along on his bike, somebody that I loved, and he went down a cul-de-sac, took a detour, and I thought, and he said, I know this is a dead end street. I know it won't go through, but I just have to go and check it out. Somebody felt they needed to go back and, 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 and make one last attempt at something that they knew was a dead end street. And it was. And that's what they ended up like. They ended up doing all the work for people who acted like they couldn't do it for themselves. People who acted like babies when they were adults. I gave from myself. I'm thin. I gave them the food, the sustenance, the covering, the clothing, the shelter. And this is what I was left with. Nothing. Harvest has come and gone and here I am. So this message is you need to now stop relying on someone else to come to you. Stop looking to those for comfort. It's gonna be a cold day in hell if you wait to get comfort, solace, protection, and love from those that you have given to. You're like that cormorant in the water that's struggling. That cormorant has the biggest wings. That was a big bird capable of taking care of themselves, but they've taken care of everyone else to the point where they've depleted themselves. They've been working and other people have been taking from them. And they think they have nothing left, but they do. They've got a thought, they've got an idea, they've got a plan, they've got the skills to pay the bills. Look what you've got, turn to it. It's gonna be a cold day in hell if you wait for those people to come for you. This is magic that you hold in your hands. It's an idea, it's a plan of action, it's a choice. Once I take a bite of that, ah, I heard in my head, I took one bite of that bottom feeder and look what she did to my life. I'll never allow that to happen again. I'll never allow that to happen again. But you've got that beautiful, beautiful apple in your hand. You want to take a bite. It's juicy. But the last time, this is what they left me like. I don't want to take a bite. So once you take a bite, you're committing yourself to the job, to the relationship, 
to the move, whatever this is, three dubs just flew by, three full circle completion. When you do take a bite of this and you, you're the one that holds this in your hand, you're gonna be done with the need for their approval, for their shelter, for their love, for their anything, because what you hold in your hand is everything. You're the only one that can save you. You're the only one that can make this choice. You. Love. Okay, so now for everyone, we have three cards that we're all gonna get a message from. We're all gonna get an affirmator, which is an affirmation card. We're all gonna get an I can do it card. And we're all gonna get a grace card. So for those who chose the fire wand, what is your message from grace? Wow, I'm grace, my best friend, it's amazing. Ask, when we call upon the divine for guidance and support, we will receive a response. Spiritual signposts will be put in our path to guide us to our greatest good. It's a fact, ask, and then watch, listen, and be aware. For those who chose the diffuser bracelet. Whoa, this one, that was an afterthought. So there could have been a falling tower, right? And when a tower falls, it's because something was built on a faulty foundation. So it's actually growth for you. So accept the lesson. When things don't go your way, something more important to the growth of your soul is in the works. This tower fell because it wasn't in your highest good. It was not built on a solid foundation and now you can do that. For those who chose the fancy Jasper, imagination. Life's difficulties are a call to consciousness, a grace inspired event that challenges us to reach beyond limited thinking. Use your imagination. Correct for neutrality. For those who chose the mermaid necklace, this one's for me, I guess. For those who chose the mermaid necklace, trust. She's holding on to her seashell. When you put your ear up to a conch shell, you can hear the ocean answering you. She's holding on to that. She's not letting go. The more we follow our intuition, the more we'll find the right doors open to assist us in fulfilling our life's purpose. Trust what you're getting intuitively. Okay. Affirmator. For those who chose the fire wand. Thank you, Sandy. Every time I use these, I thank Sandy. She sent them to me. I love them. They're witty. They're funny. I'm going to get a new deck it's called the Rebel Cards. It uses swear words, but it's pretty firm and it's pretty funny. I'm going to get it. This is not quite so uh, in your face. For those who chose the fire wand, manifestation. If you could have anything you wanted, what would it be? Get specific and get greedy. You're holding a magic wand and you can conjure up anything. Could it be that when you declare your wishes out loud, you're actually casting a spell for your dreams to come true? That's why you be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. Or is it just that in, very, in a practical sense, the more people that you speak about your desires, the more fo folks there are who know what you want and might have the means to help you make them happen. Either way, stop waiting and start manifesting, but don't use that word if you don't want to. So it's like me with when I'm posting all those pictures of what I like, my tiny home, um, the, the traveling bus, and then I love Idlewild, I love Idlewild, and what happens? Facebook brand posts a picture of the of the mobile home. And it's funny because my landlord looked at it and he goes, a modular home. He goes, it looks like a tiny home. And I said, yeah, but it's on land. And then somebody said, it looks like you're traveling bus, but it's on land. It's in the mountains. Hmm. So maybe it's the best of both, right? Because where am I? Because what did I say? I need to find a little place like that that I can plant, plant it on a land, on a property. Well, that's how I would do it, right? Get a little tiny home on a property in the mountains. I'm going to see all three of them this weekend. I'll videotape it. You guys will be able to see. For those who chose the diffuser bracelet. Perseverance. My word. It seems you're on a massive journey right now and this card has arrived to remind you that you will reach the other side. The mountain you're climbing is huge and formidable, but so is your ability to climb it. You don't need to enjoy it. You just need to tackle it. Complain if it makes the job easier. Blow off the steam. You think mountain climbers get to the top of Everest on an inspirational quote? No way. They're grunting and crying and cursing the whole freaking way, like little pirates. Trust, that just doesn't sell a lot of posters. <laughs> Fancy Jasper. Fancy Jasper. I love this song. I'm coming at you. Because I know you got a bad reputation. 
And you're giving me sensation. Don't have to think about nothing. These friends keep talking way too much. Saying I should give you up. I can't hear them though. I've been there all night. I've been there all day. And you got me going side to side. I've been here all night. I've been here all day. Friends interfering. Why is it so important that friends stop somebody from going where they want to go? And what's wrong with you that you can't make your own choice? Fancy Jasper. Engagement. Making everybody think we're solo. But you know you got me. But I got you. Tonight I'm making deals with the devil. I know it's going to get me in trouble. Just as long as you know you got me. Today I make the conscious choice to engage with the world in an active way. I'll take a new route and talk to strangers. I will smell flowers and pet dogs and maybe walk around barefoot for a while if I'm not inside a 7-Eleven. At the very least, I'll have a day that's slightly more interesting than average. And at the most, I'll have a startling epiphany or make a friend who will change my life forever. No pressure. And here you see an octopus. Octopus, your best friend is like an octopus stuck to your face. And there you are, fishy. Cheers to you. <laughs> Fancy Jasper. Got me going side to side. And then we have the mermaid, right? Correct for neutrality. It's getting hot, so we got one more deck and I gotta go in the house and turn on the air conditioning. Correct for neutrality for those who chose the mermaid necklace. Friendliness. I like his hat. I'm a hat person. Yes, watch. I'm the squirrel. I got this for the last time I went up to Mount Idlewild. Mount Idlewild. Okay. Whenever I smile, I make someone's day better. What a cool way to buy happiness for free. Today I will remember, remember what an awesome power I hold. Remember that one that had the apple? There's an awesome power that you hold in your hands. I'll take joy in improving lives simply by giving away grins like crazy. Note, in a pinch, money will also do the trick. <laughs> uh, I like that. Okay, that's that, right? We got all those guys. So now we're gonna go to the I Can Do It cards and we're at a wrap. I love these cards by Louise Hay. For those who chose the fire wand, whoop, and fell right out. I get the help I need when I need it. From various sources, my support system is strong and loving. I cannot change another person. I let others be who they are. And I simply love who I am because I am a star, fish. <laughs> Ooh, the, the um, lava diffuser bracelet, your card came right out as well. Life is never stuck, stagnant, or stale, for each moment is ever new and fresh. I do something new or at least different every day. Okay? For those who chose the fancy Jasper, I did, clearly. You got a way of driving me crazy. You're hiding out under the pier, I can see you. I need somebody to hear, somebody to know, somebody to hold. It's easy to say, it's never the same. I guess I kind of like the way you numbed all the pain. Now the day bleeds into nightfall and you're not here to get me through it all. I let my guard down and then you pulled the rug. Kinda used to be in someone you loved. And no, I love this song. The key to creativity is knowing that my thinking creates my experience. I use this key in every area of my life. I am the divine masculine. I am about forward movement. I am a clear thinker and I express myself with ease. I need somebody to know, somebody to feel, somebody to tell, to know how it feels. It's easy to say, it's never the same. I guess I kind of like the way you helped me escape. Now the days bleed into nightfall and you're not here to help me through it all. 
I let my guard down And then you pulled the rug I was getting kinda used to being someone you loved Oh, now to close my eyes Let me hurt sometimes Fall into arms I love this song, makes me cry For those who chose The Fancy Jasper, I did. You're not here to get me through it all. I let my guard down and then you pulled the rug. I was getting kind of used to being someone that you loved. But now the day bleeds into nightfall and you're not here. I now deserve love, romance and joy and all the good that life has to offer me. I am surrounded by love. All is well. And for the mermaid. Used to be in someone you love. I'm not responsible for other people. We're all under the law of our own consciousness. It is no fun being a victim. I refuse to be helpless anymore. I claim my own power. And with that, friends, we're at a wrap. I was gonna say we're at a rest. See my little Idlewild squirrel? She's out her head, I'm out my mind. We got that love, that crazy kind. I am his, he is mine. In the end, it's him and I. Pretty cool song. All right, you guys, let's take a spin around Canyon Lake, shall we? Bonnie and Clyde. Crazy Gemini, hmm. Crazy Gemini and his psycho girlfriend. <sighs> hot, hot, hot. So, this whole time that we've done this reading, underneath that silver pier, and he's still there, is the great snowy egret, hiding out in the shadows, waiting to make his strike. And that osprey, look at the butterfly. Transformation in full flight. That cormorant that was making his way across the lake didn't take off in flight. He's resting on his emotional waters right now, thinking. But he's getting ready to fly. All right, you guys, I hope you have a beautiful day. I'm going to go into work. I thank Spirit ahead of time for all of my calls where I can be of assistance and help people, people that want to hear what Spirit has to say, not interested in hearing a lot of gossip or a lot of drama. So I'm asking for those calls today and I appreciate the ones that I get. Whenever I hear bells, this is my mom's angel speaking. All right, you guys. I love you. Have a great day. We'll talk soon.